News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. We have more on that Amber Alert to end the arrest of a North Carolina man. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It is Tuesday, June 21st, 2016. Uh, pretty clouds this morning, a little bit of sunshine backlighting the clouds. We have 52 degrees in Missoula right now. Our newscast this morning is sponsored by Office City, celebrating 100 years in business this year. See them for office supplies and furniture, price match guarantee, and free next day delivery. Authorities say two North Carolina parents kidnapped their own infant son from social services that apparently drove across the country in a stolen minivan. The Randolph County Sheriff's Office said Sunday, John Eastlack was found by Missoula police at a hotel with his parents after officers spotted the minivan. That's where our John King takes up the story. Police responded to that Amber Alert for eight-month-old John E. Slack after being kidnapped from social services by his non-custodial parents. The chances that the boy would have been uh, re- be recovered in Montana may seem slim, but according to police public information officer Travis Welsh, the details in the Amber Alert helped in the boy's recovery. The information will include a description of a vehicle that they may be uh, driving and also that they may be headed to either Great Falls or Missoula, Montana. We had a lot of information in this Amber Alert, which uh, doesn't always happen, but we had a vehicle description. So in this case, officers were actually searching hotel parking lots looking for uh, the vehicle that was described. One officer noted the car and police apprehended Chad Eastlack at the Howard Johnson Hotel and interviewed the child's biological mother but did not take her into custody. Eight-month-old John Eastlack is now being uh, in the care of the Child Protective Services. The child was turned over to uh, Child Protective Services here in Missoula. They in turn will coordinate with social services in the state of North Carolina to get the infant back to where he belongs. I tell you, the best thing that happened in all of this is that that little boy has been recovered and is safe. Wherever he is safest, hopefully that's where he will end up. Chad Eastlack was uh, seen in justice court yesterday. Bond was set at uh, a fugitive warrant at $50,000, and he is not fighting extradition to North Carolina. A jury has convicted a man of shooting his ex-girlfriend, and a man during what... uh, during what prosecutors say was a jealous rage. The Daily Interlake in Kalispell reports 41-year-old Michael Ilk of Alberta was convicted last week of two counts of attempted deliberate homicide and two counts of aggravated assault. Prosecutors say he fired about 10 shots at his ex-girlfriend Hadassah Paraslet and Tyler Wilson at a construction site where Paraslet worked. Paris Latt and Wilson, both of Eureka, each were hit twice during the April 15, 2015 shooting. Ilk followed them to the Eureka Law Enforcement Center where he was arrested. Defense attorneys argued that Wilson shot first and Ilk fired back in self-defense. 36-year-old James Culver of Darby is being held in the Missoula County Jail, charged with assault with a weapon and partner or family member assault for allegedly beating and kicking his own mother and threatening her with a knife. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Celine Kepke explained to Judge Karen Orzek why she was asking for a $50,000 bond. There are several serious allegations here, including a knife held to the neck of the victim and several threats, as well as several physical attacks. He is on parole for a previous assault with a weapon conviction where he received 15 years with 10 suspended out of Ravalli County. Kepke asked for certain conditions should Culver be released on bond. In addition to the violence, Your Honor, he was driving after drinking alcohol and taking a large amount of prescription medication, so we do believe he poses a danger to the community as well as to himself and his mother. We're asking for standard conditions, plus no discussing the case with the victim in here. Um, That would be his mother. Judge Karen Orzak set bail at $50,000 and ordered Culver not to discuss the case with his mother. A judge has denied the request of a Great Falls man charged with fatally shooting a man to have new legal representation in the case. Brandon Meismer had sought new lawyers after pleading guilty to deliberate homicide in March without a plea agreement in the death of 26-year-old Cody Steve Breyer. Meismer had argued that his court-appointed attorneys failed to communicate with him and never obtained a follow-up psychological evaluation after he complained the first test was conducted poorly. District Judge John Kutzman shot down his argument yesterday, determining that the attorneys had communicated with their client are, quote, perhaps too candid with him, end quote. Meisberg could still withdraw his guilty plea, but must do so with his current lawyers. The Montana Highway Patrol reports a Missoula man in his 60s was killed Saturday morning in a one-vehicle crash on I-90 near Bonner. 
Trooper Carl Ward said the crash occurred just before 8 a.m. The vehicle is eastbound on I-90 near mile marker 111. It left the roadway to the left for an unknown reason at this time. Traveled in the median of the roadway, continuing eastbound, and when it encountered the DOT fence that runs north and south between the two bridge decks, it vaulted, rolled, and landed on its roof uh, on the roadway below I-90. The victim has been identified as 69-year-old Joel Jones of Missoula, and the coroner determined the cause of death to be blunt force trauma. He was not wearing a seatbelt when the crash occurred. The Blackfeet Tribal Business Council has voted to redraft the tribe's constitution. Council Chairman Harry Barnes said Monday's 8-1 to vote clears the way for the tribe to create a new form of government that would eliminate the tribal council and create elected positions for judge, a president and vice president, and a 13-member legislature, all independent from each other. Barnes said the Blackfeet had been operating under laws uh, contained in the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act. He said under that form of government, people had no control except for elections every four years and tribal councils routinely interfered with the courts and law enforcement. The Montana Nurses Association is touring the state of Montana this month, trying to get the public on board with upcoming legislation that could change the way crimes against health care professionals are handled in court. Uh, Executive Director Vicki Bird explains. What we are going to bring forth is a law that makes it a felony to assault a nurse or healthcare worker while they're on duty. This would be similar to like a police officer or a police dog. If you assault a police dog while on duty, you will get charged a felony. If you assault a nurse while on duty, that is not a protected class. Bird says 22 other states already have similar laws and that Montana's will cover CNAs, even lab techs who provide direct patient care. Those suffering from mental illness will not be immediately excused from felony charges. Just because they have a mental illness or they have, you know, uh, abused drugs or alcohol is not necessarily an excuse not to prosecute. But those that are truly severely uh, mentally ill or have developmental disabilities or it's your 95-year-old grandma that has a low blood sugar and that smacked you, those, those would not be charged with the felony. Bird said attacks against health care providers happen regularly in Montana. And here's uh, the way we're going to end this uh, newscast this morning. 30-year-old Tiffany Ortega will be spending the next 30 days in jail as the guest of Missoula County after cursing and insulting the presiding judge, Justice of the Peace, Karen Orzek. Ortega was appearing via video from the jail on two misdemeanor counts. Judge Orzek attempted to gather information about her home address and phone number. Ortega became loud and abusive toward the judge, who began by sentencing Ortega to two days in jail and bail of $5,000. After Ortega swore at the judge again, she found Ortega in contempt of court and added another 24 hours to her jail sentence. But Ortega wasn't quite through yet. She defiantly looked into the camera and gave the judge the finger with both hands. Great, Orzek said, we'll give you another five days for that, five for each hand. To which Ortega replied by cursing the judge in an extremely crude manner. George Orzek stared at Ortega through the court camera and said, quote, we'll give, you, give her 30 more days for calling me that word, end quote. Ortega's next court appearance will be August 17th before Judge Orzek. Our News Talk time now, 6.13. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Partly to mostly sunny skies today with an isolated threat of a shower. Highs will be in the low 70s. Winds will be breezy with wind gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. Breezy tonight with lows in the 40s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.